Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Get Booked. Hey, Jen, what are we talking about today? We are talking about your favorite reads of the year. All of the books that have been checked out lots and lots of times here at the library. Yep, so we were able to run reports by genres so we could see what the top, like, ten books were for each genre, for the most part. Uh, so yeah, would you like to start us off, Jen? Sure, I've got the picture books, which is great. Um, this was one of my favorites, too. I'm glad you all liked it. It's called Help Wanted Must Love Books, and it's a really cute book about a girl whose father gets a new job, and he's not going to be able to read story times to her at night, like right before bed. So she puts up this Help Wanted sign, and bedtime storyteller must apply within. And she gets all of these interesting fairy tale creatures, and it's just so funny and cute, and if you're a fairy tale reader, it's just great. And I love the illustrations. So that is Help Wanted Must Love Books. I love the illustrations in that one. It is so cute. Okay, I definitely cheated on this one. <laughs> Surprise! Um, I really liked this I Promise book by LeBron James, which also had gorgeous illustrations. Oh, and there's something inside. Um, the illustrations were nice. It was a really great sentimental book. I did tear up a little bit. Um, it was all about going to school and promising to do your best and promising to be kind and ugh, it was just really, really great. And next we had the ABCs of Kindness, which hey. goes along with this one. I think we like Kindness in Colchester. We do! And if you like this one, there is also a 1, 2, 3 of Kindness. So simple text, simple coloring blocks, um, just really cute. And of course, if you like dinosaurs, we had We Love Dinosaurs. And this, of course, was also really fun. Different ones. Ones who like leaves, ones who like meaty treats. You know where that's going. One with gigantic roars! <laughs> Super fun picture books. Okay, so I have a couple different genres than you do. So I tackled adult uh, sci-fi and fantasy, and so I'm going to highlight some of our stuff. A lot of this... Mm, I can't talk today. I'm trying to say all the words at once, and you only need some of them spread out over time. So uh, I'm going to highlight some of the books that maybe you have or haven't heard about. So uh, Max Brooks, son of Mel Brooks, uh, did a new uh, sci-fi book called uh, De-Evolution, a first-hand account of the Rainier Sasquatch Massacre. So if you read World War Z, his other book that kind of like acts like a documentary non-fiction read, this too is in that similar vein, and a Bigfoot just went on a big old rampage and uh, killed a bunch of people. And um, I haven't actually had a chance to read this uh, because it is checked out, which is why we have this handy printout here and not the actual physical book. Um, one of my other sci-fi reads, I did get to read this one this year, and I was really happy to see that y'all liked it too. Um, it's called Gideon the Ninth. It's the first book in a trilogy. We do have this, the second one on the shelf too, which is also, which is called Hera the Ninth. Um, Gideon the Ninth, it's really hard to explain because it's science fiction, it's fantasy, it's mystery, it's all of these things thrown together. Uh, short in, uh, long story short, Gideon is, lives on a necromancer type planet. Um, their whole thing is necromancy. It's a pretty much a barren wasteland of a planet because necromancers. So there's a lot of like dead bones and stuff like that and bringing people back their spirits. Uh, Gideon wants to get off. She's an orphan. She doesn't want to be there. She's like trying, she's always trying to get off this planet. But for whatever reason, she's been trained to be the bodyguard for like the head, I guess you would say royal person, hero. And something happens and they have to like meet and there's like this huge competition and there's a lot of political gain in it as well, and so Harrow's like, well, you're coming with me. And Gideon's like, well, I mean, it gets me off this barren rock, sure. And so the whole time, Gideon's like, how can I double cross? Or does she get sucked into the competition and being the best bodyguard possible? That is one part of the story. It's bonkers. It's off the hook. I don't even really... People try to explain this book and, like, that doesn't even do it justice. It's great. Um, so if you're looking for just an off-the-wall... Is it sci-fi? Is it fantasy? Is it... Yeah, sure, it's all of these things. Read this book. It's great. Um... So yeah, that's my sci-fi fantasy. What's, what do you got next? I have kids. So a couple of mine were also checked out. I grabbed different ones in that series. Um, so Fergus and Zeke, the series one is sci at the science fair. That one was checked out, but the first one was here. So it's in our easy chapter series. Um, they're about two mice who live in the school. Um, and they do wild and different things. This one, they are just hanging out on a field trip. Um, there is another one, as I say, at the science fair where they want to be 
participants, but also they end up being in some of this experiment, which is kind of fun. Hmm. Um, then we had a kid's spy book, the newest one. This one is the first one. I grabbed it. So it's a little bit like Wimpy Kid with the text and the pictures. Um, if you like spies, this is a fun one. This one, um, the Queen of England makes an appearance. You've got some dogs. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, then we've got Ghost Squad. That book was so big this year. It was really fun. I didn't get a chance to read it because it was always checked out. I have heard great things about it. Sorry, it really it's, it's fine. Um, so just before Halloween, two girls who are best friends cast a spell that accidentally awaken evil spirits, and then of course they have to try to fix them before it ruins the town. So it Oops. sounds really fun. And the cover's great. It's got like a Hocus Pocus feel. Yeah. And then Catalyst by Sarah Beth Durst, um, the girl, uh, Zoe, finds a kitten, she's been, uh, kind of a rescue person, and her family's kind of like, we're done rescuing all these different animals, um, but she finds this cat and kitten, and they agree that she can keep the kitten, but what they don't realize is that the kitten starts to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow until it's bigger than a house and there are all these problems and she tries to hide it and it's just, it's fun. There's a road trip where they go, her and her neighbor go um, as a road trip on the kitten and, you know, things happen. Interesting. It's fun. That sounds like real Clifford the Big Red Dog situation. It kind of is, but like a, in a chapter before. Yeah. I, I, I'm here for that. Uh, yes. Okay, so I also tackled Mystery in the adult collection. Uh, so my first book I thought was going to be on the shelf. It was not. It um, got checked out in between me looking for it, <laughs> or me like, doing the catalog search, doing a bunch of other things in the library, and then actually going through the shelf. Vicky's like, oh, I just checked that out to somebody else. Like, Crack. But it's been very popular. So it was The Silent Patient, which reminds me of a, by uh, Michele... Mm, see? I didn't have the whole name because I thought I would just grab it off the book. <laughs> I had a hubris. Um, last name is McLadies. Uh, it's great. Like you'll, you'll see the cover and be like, oh yeah, I've seen that book because it's been kind of a big thriller. It reminds, the plot reminds me of like a late 80s, early 90s thriller that like Sharon Stone would have been in the movie for. So essentially this woman just up and like stabs her husband like five times and murders him and then all of a sudden goes silent. So the mystery is like the the doctor's trying to like get to the heart Dr. Simpley is trying to get to the heart of, like, why she, why she killed her husband, and she ain't talking. Hence, the silent patient. Um, yeah, so that's one. And then my other one, also not on the shelf, because y'all like it so much, which is awesome. It's called The Wives by Taryn Fisher. Uh, have you heard about this one? No. Uh, this one is interesting. So, uh, this woman has never met the other wives. They each know that the other one exists, but they don't know who it is. The only thing they have in common is they have the same husband. Uh, and he spends, like, one day with them, and then, like, they have, like, they all have days of the week. That's, like, their day, right? So this is, like, a big love scenario, but we don't all live in the same house. Um, so she loves him so much, though, she doesn't care that she has to share him with these other wives, right? But eventually, somehow, there, she, like, sees him with, uh, with, like, another one of the wives, and then figures out, oh, that's one of the other wives. And then, but doesn't tell the other wife. She just kind of has this, like, a, I guess you would say a meet-cute for wives? I don't know. Um, and tries to befriend her, and so it's kind of like gets into this weird like thriller s scenario thing. So like, yeah, it's a it's a it's an interesting story. Uh, so yeah, so if you're looking for something that's kind of off the wall, I would give that one a shot. Uh, what do you have next? I've got the tween teen books. All right, so y'all checked out a bunch of tween books this year, so I'm just gonna go through. Anthony Horowitz did Alex Ryder. Um, Stormbreaker was checked out, but I grabbed the third book. Um, Alex Ryder is a 14-year-old spy who lives in Britain. They actually made a movie, which was meh. Um, but they recently made a TV show, which I feel like is somewhere streaming, but I haven't found it, and I'm hoping it's good, because the books are amazing. If you like spy books, they're great. Um, the Firekeeper was one of them. Um, this is a sequel to The Stormrunner, so I don't want to talk too much about it, because I feel like that kind of will ruin parts, but um, Zane does a bad thing and then he has to fix it, basically. So it's like a fantasy type story? Yes, okay. and the gods, so it's a god story and the gods are Mayan gods. And this is part of the Rick Riordan Presents books, so you know what's good. Cool, cool, cool. Um, 
Speaking of Rick Riordan, The Lightning Thief was all over... Pretty much all of Rick Riordan's books were on the list. Like, it was a good year for Rick Riordan. Yeah, if it, if it wasn't like his actual book, it was his publishing line. Yes. <laughs> yep, they're very popular. As was Tale of Magic by Chris Colfer, um, who actually just wrote a new book or a new spin-off series. I'm a little lost on this one, but this, I'm just going to read the tagline. In a world where magic is outlawed, Bristol Evergreen's life is about to change forever. Ooh, because, oh, I, didn't, I didn't know this. I've heard really good things about this. She stumbles across a secret section in the library and discovers a book that introduces her to a world beyond her imagination and learns the impossible. What? Library's changing it, everybody! I mean, I would read Surprise. that. I know. I know, his really good. I know his latest stories uh, series is really popular, too. Yes, that's the first one. Oh, okay. I believe. Oh. Yeah, that's right. Not... It's part of the series. Either way, it's really popular. It is. Alright, next is School for Good and Evil, where the... Oh. You kind of... You're trained to be either a fairy tale hero or a fairy tale villain. Maybe you'll be a princess, maybe you won't. What if you don't want to be either? Good question. You have to read the book and find out. Okay. <laughs> Alright, that's the team tween stuff. Alright, cool. So I've also got graphic novels. So in our adult graphic novels, Moonstruck, which this is volume two because volume one was checked out, uh, surprise, was popular. Uh, Moonstruck, have you heard about this one? No. Uh, it's a cute little queer comic about a werewolf that opens up a coffee house. Um, and falls in love, uh, and it's in this town, like, mythical creatures, um, live pretty peacefully along humans, like, no one's trying to, like, kill or eat each other. Um, so it has a lot of, like, uh, I guess you would say, like, realistic fiction type stuff, but, you know, it's a werewolf in love. Um, and I can't remember if the werewolf is in love with a human, or if the werewolf is in love with a vampire, because I have yet to read this, because it is always checked out, which is a great problem. So if you like this one, which is great. Uh, let's see. For our teen stuff, not really surprising, um, Hike U was huge. Have you heard about this one? No. Uh, so, you might like it because you like sports reads. I do. It is a, it's based on the manga. Actually, I don't know if the much came first. It's real chicken or egg, manga or the anime. Um, manga is the comic, anime is the cartoon. Uh, Hike U, uh, essentially is about a kid who is not great at volleyball, but he's, like, obsessed. And so, he's gonna try and get on the team, and he's gonna convince a bunch of other kids that aren't very good either to get on this team. They're like the bad news bear of volleyball, but it's okay because they have heart and they have fire. And of course, like, you know, there's another kid that's really good at volleyball that hates him a whole, whole lot. Uh, it's great. It's got a lot of, like, cute, like, school stuff in it, too. Um, and then we've also got Assassination Classroom. This is a huge anime, um, and number, I'm not surprised that the number one volume is, like, one of our biggest circs. It is about an alien that comes to Earth, and he is going to, like, kill the entire human race, blow up the planet, do all that. Um, meanwhile, there's a miscreant group of children in uh, this Japanese school that have been picked to try and kill this guy. Um, but what the weird thing about it is, because it's a manga, is that the alien also is a really good teacher. And so they are conflicted about killing him, but they shall still try and kill him every volume. Um, and it's really funny, too. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. You got romance, you're going to go again. Yeah, okay. Okay, I also looked at the top uh, board games that you checked out this year. Our number one board game of all time was, as it shifts around in the can, it makes a lot of noise, uh, Sushi Go Party. Uh, have you played this? Mm, maybe? I can't remember. Okay, so I think part of the reason this is like one of our most playable games is because A, it's adorable, because all the little sushi cards have faces. It's a really easy pick and pass game. So it's different from a lot of card games in that like you have it in your hand and like you're trying to pick the best cards in your hand and then when you're done, you pass the cards to the next person. So the cards are constantly revolving. So it's a game where you're also trying to score the most points by having the best sushi lunch or dinner or whichever meal you decide to have. Um, it's just freaking adorable. I love it. And then our other one that's been really cool is um, Slamwich. It's also a card game by the same company too, Game Right. Uh, in Sandwich, it is a game where you are slapping cards, and you are trying to create, like, a sandwich, and also get the most points. Um, and I believe it's, like, whoever goes out first and gets rid of all your cards. So it's real, it's real fast. Um, I know kids love to play it. At the same time, I know we've had times where we've had to get out the ice pack because people got a little too excited when we were playing it for the library team game day. Uh, but yeah, 
we had to put a hiatus on this one for a little bit, but it is super fun. But please make rules about how hard you can slap that table because people get a little bit too uh, enthused. That's a good word. Yep. Alright, I have romance. So I have two here, two not. Um, so, Almost Just Friends by Dil Shavas, which is one of my favorites. Um, you don't say. I do say. So Piper has raised her siblings. They're now kind of grown up, almost out of the house. Uh, she's ready to fix up the lake house that her grandparents left her. She wants to sell it, and then she wants to kind of focus on herself. Uh, things don't turn out exactly that way, and the family secrets kind of spill out, and it changes everything, and she's like, ah, who knew? And of course, there's a next door neighbor who's kind of honky. Does he have a dog? Maybe. I, you know, I actually think the cover is misleading and I don't think there's a dog in this one. Oh no, you know what? He does have a dog and the dog is really cute. But you're not 100% on that. I like... No, was, I'm not. I was, really think he does have a dog. Was it a cat or a hamster? No, no, she is a very dog. No, actually. I'm just kidding. I'm, it's just... I'm saying things for jokes. Where's my head? Okay, the next one is Love Lettering, which, of course, is also checked out. Um, Meg does really awesome calligraphy, she loves lettering, she makes journals, she makes wedding invitations. She also has a knack for kind of telling, like, looking at people and seeing things about them. So when a couple comes in for some wedding invitations, she's like, you are never going to make it. You should not get married. And that's what she says in her head. And as she's writing out the invitations, she writes a little warning into the invitations. And the fiancé spots it and he calls off the wedding. And then a year later, he tracks her down and he's like, dude, what? Why? And she's like, oh, well. So that's funny. It doesn't sound like a sound business model. It backfires, of course. <laughs> um, Christina Lauren had two books on there, Twice in a Blue Moon and The Honey Don't List. She's blowing up this year. She is. So, fun fact, Christina Lauren is actually two people writing together. Really? Yep. Who knew? Not me. Jennifer did, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> so, Twice in a Blue Moon, I haven't read this one yet. Um, during a two-week whirlwind vacation, Sam and Tate fall for each other in a way that first loves only do. Um, and then... Kate is a long lost daughter of one of the one of the world's biggest film stars, which of course she didn't tell him about, and that blows up their relationship once she finds that out. So well, boom. Uh, the last one I have is Kristen Higgins. Good luck with that. This is our large print copy. Um, so I'm a big Kristen Higgins fan. I love her books. Um. Which is great, because I've been telling everybody to read this one. I'm so happy you got checked out with so many times. Um, so, um, there are these three girls. They were best friends when they met at a weight loss camp. Um, one of the, the friends dies. Um, she never kind of got over her weight problem, and it ended up killing her, sadly. Um, and the two other friends kind of haven't really been in touch as much. And they rediscover this list they made at the final summer that they all spent together. And they're like, oh, we, don't, we haven't done any of those things. We need to start doing those. So they start doing those. Um, and it's, just, it's a really sweet friendship story. Um, and getting over grief, grief and dealing with the loss of the friendship. And there's some romance involved. And it's just great. I love it. Okay, that's it for me. You all read a lot of good books this year. We did. Uh, I also I did mine out of order because what's up Wednesday. Um, cool. So far, because it's Thursday. It's not Thursday. Wait. It's <laughs> it time to pandemic. Uh, yeah. So y'all who read middle grade graphic novels really loved Crush last year, which makes sense because this was this came out last year, I believe. Um, so yes, this is one of our biggest reads. I think I might have to replace it. It is having some wear and tear issues, which is great for a first year book. Um, or maybe it's been out for a year and a half. Either way, you loved it. That's awesome. Snapdragon also did really well. Uh, if you haven't read this one, you totally should. Um, do I really even need to book talk these two? I know we've talked about Snapdragon, we've talked about Snapdragon 
Crush uh, in Svetlana Chemakova's Very Bright Middle School series, uh, each one is a different story. So this is the third one that came out. Um, I would say if you have it, if you have a kid that has not read these, start from the beginning because with each book there are side characters that the next book might be their main story. Um, so the first one is Awkward, which is a great meet cute with the kids running to each other at school and they think each other hate each other and then they work it out. And then the second one is Brave, about a kid that gets bullied all the time, um, standing up for himself. Um, and then this one, Crush, uh, obviously we have a crush going on, and like, how do you deal with a crush? Will they like you back? You don't know. Um, it's so hard to figure out. Yes, and then for our kids' graphics, which I totally forgot to grab, uh, everybody who's a parent will not be surprised about our grade school ones, because guess what was our number one circulation of all time last year? Dogman. Yes. Because the Dogman, High, Low, or Big Nate. Yeah, you guys love Dogman, the High, Low, and Big Nate, and we love them too. So thank you for reading in 2020. Uh, I can't wait to see what you guys will read in 2021. That is true. Cool. All right, so this has been Get Books for the Year. We'll see you in 2021. Bye.